Mamwaha or good afternoon. Your friend Mena Naba Duncan. I choose this moment to speak in tree because it's an opportunity to public publicly acknowledge and acknowledge my roots and who I am. I was born in Ghana and I'm a storyteller. Mary Ann Shad Carey also knew who she was, and it doesn't appear that she was afraid to say it. And that's why we're here. We're here to celebrate a great black woman, the first woman to publish and edit a newspaper in North America. Mary Ann Shad Carey was a publisher. She was also an abolitionist, a journalist, an educator, a speaker, an all-round leader. And she's come to mean so much to me. And I can't tell you exactly when I learned about Mary Ann Chad Carey, but I can tell you the thought that I had, which was some version of, why am I just hearing this now? And that's one of the themes that might come up for you as you listen to the conversations today. Just like how it's been with so many important black figures who have made their mark on this land, Mary Ann Chad Carey has just been absent or underrepresented in our history and education. And as you can tell, that needs to change. Toronto History Museums uh, at the City of Toronto and Archives of Ontario have been doing their own part individually to, to make some of that change. They've, uh, they have launched their own projects. And today's event represents their first joint project. And it echoes how Marianne herself brought different people and groups and organizations together for a single purpose, and so I'm honored to be part of it today. So here's what's on deck. We've got a short, a series of short panel discussions, including historians and scholars and journalists on the impact of Mary Ann Shad Carey and, uh, and her life and, and everything that she has done. You're gonna hear from people who have written about her, who've been thinking about her, and because the conversations uh, will be recorded, you might be able to hear some of it later on. So we are being recorded today. They'll be used um, in media for the City of Toronto and on CBC Radio. What's really special about today is that you're going to hear from Mary Ann Shad Carey's family members who are in the room today. Shad family members, put your hands up. Let's see you. So I hear some people came from Ottawa and there's a Detroit contingent. Detroit, where are you at? Yes, Detroit's there. Is anyone here from Washington? I heard some people might be coming from Washington. No, okay, maybe, maybe later, maybe later. Thank you so much for being here. It is amazing to be sharing this space with you. It's amazing. So to start our event today, we have someone who wants to introduce herself. Well, hello, my name is Mary Ann Shad, and you are oh, pleased to meet you. Well, where should I start? I was born in Delaware in 1823, the eldest of 13 children. Do you know what it's like to have 12 siblings? Well, it's quite something. And I believe it's a part of the reason why I love teaching so much. Well, that and my father, who was a prominent abolitionist and advocated heavily for the education of colored people. At just the age of 16, I organized a school for colored youth in my hometown. This was before I became a champion for integration. I was young. <laughs> From there, I went on to teach in some of the best schools in New York City, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. My writing was recognized by Frederick Douglass, and he began to publish me in his abolitionist paper, The North Star. It was when I focused my attention to supporting colored refugees fleeing to Canada that the world really started to take note. It's for this work that you may have seen my mural painted on the Mackenzie House. It was nice, yes? Yes? And so, one year after the Fugitive Slave Act was passed, I made the decision to move north of the Detroit River to Windsor where I fought for the support of integrated schools and communities. I was opposed to the segregated settlements that the Bibbs championed, and so our relationship suffered. Now, of course, it didn't help that we both had newspapers. My paper, The Provincial Freeman, has been recognized as the first newspaper published by a woman. Take that in. <laughs> Oh, well now, I'll end there. I could go on, but you'll learn some more at the event. 
I'll see you there. Adrian Shad is a historian, a curator, and an author. She is Marianne Shad Carey's great, great, great niece. We have Shannon Buxton, curator, Shan Shannon Prince, sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Shannon Prince is a curator of the Buxton National Historic Site in North Buxton, Ontario, just south of Chatham. Shannon is also Marianne's great, great, great niece. Then we have Maxine Robbins, a retired educator. She is married to Ed Robbins, a retired educator and superintendent. Uh, Ed Robbins is Marianne Shad Carey's great, great, great nephew. And uh, Maxine played a pivotal role in helping to keep Marianne's records alive. So for this conversation, we're gonna start with how each of you really first encountered Marianne Shad Carey. We're gonna have some mics passed on to you first. So Adrian, you were at a museum in the 70s. That's how you first encountered uh, Marianne Chad Carey. What, what happened? So I was visiting Buxton, because I'm originally from there, but I was living in Toronto, still live in Toronto. But I was down there for, for the summer, and I thought I would go over to the museum for the afternoon and check out what was going on over there. And I walked in, and the curator of the time, the late, great Arlie Robbins, first curator of the museum, just kind of casually handed me this article. And I looked at the front of it, and it said, Marianne Shad, um, publisher, teacher, lawyer, uh, and crusader for black freedom, something like that. And I said, wow, who is Marianne Shad? <laughs> I'd never heard of her. Uh, this was before the first biography of her came out in, I think it was 1977. I, I had never heard of this woman. And- um, But she shared your name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and it was quite eye-opening to, to read through the article and read all of the tremendous accomplishments that she had and, you know, just her fight and her spirit that came through in the article. And I was just, um, you know, overcome almost. Uh, and that, that was the beginning of my understanding and my learning about this woman. Shannon, for you, it's also connected to a museum. It is. Well, it's interesting because you mentioned Ann Arley because I was, after our chat, and I was thinking because I would ride my bike down to visit my Ann Arley, like you were saying, she's, you know, was with curator. And I would hear about this Marianne because she was writing a book and uh, about the history of Buxton, but she was also a researcher as well. And different people would write to Ann Arley about things. So she would mention this Marianne and, and you know, every time I would go down. But I was more interested in what my Uncle Laverne was cooking because he was a great cook. Didn't pay any attention to it. So fast forward many years later and I was still hearing about this Marianne and I'm thinking okay so who is Marianne like uh, you know like every time I went down to see her it was always on her, the tip of her tongue and it wasn't until many years later like I was a young adult before I realized like wow like you were saying she's an incredible woman and that I was related to her and I thought damn yeah, sorry. No, but. no. When, they, when <laughs> damn but, is great. When, uh, but when but they I, were when they kept saying when they kept mentioning I know, her, what, yeah. what were they saying? Just just that you know, I heard Ann Arley saying you know she was just an amazing woman, like she was very strong, and I'm thinking, okay, so yeah, okay, so so many, and I guess because in the community, because there were so many strong women, so I'm thinking, okay, so maybe Marianne's new to the community, just you know, living around the corner, but. <laughs> Again, again, I really, I'm 
more interested in about the food. But getting the, the job at the museum, and I think that was really enlightening for me. And I was just so inspired by her. Mm. And not only from, you know, reading Ann Arley and everyone else's work that they had, you know, given to the museum, but also the fact that this was, I was part of her, if you will. Right. And, you know, her legacy is still very strong in all of the shed family today, you know, it's just, yeah, and I'm just still marvel at all of her accomplishments, and I'm still learning, so I think she's just mm. a wonderful lady. So Ed and Maxine, you found her papers in the house, uh, but you knew about, Ed, you knew about Marianne Chad Carey before you found those papers. You didn't. No. Wait a second. Okay. <laughs> okay, what happened? Well, the short answer is, we learned about uh, Mary Ann Shad Carey, her name, in uh, 1974. No, 1974, yes. And then we learned about Mary Ann Shad Carey in 1977. I will give you a little bit of the backstory on that because it was uh, quite interesting in terms of what happened. In 1967, Maxine and I bought a 50-acre farm it was right next to my father's uh, farm, and it had an old house on it. So we moved into the house, the, and we were told that some of our ancestors had built the, home, the house and had farmed the land originally. And the land was out of our family for about 29 years prior to our buying it back. In 1974, we built a new home, house on the farm and we had moved into the new house and we tore down the old house, the old wooden house. Quite interestingly enough, we were just getting ready to torch it, to, to burn it up. And then the hero of the story comes in, Maxine. Now, it isn't often that one gets to be referred to as a hero. So I... <laughs> Oh, so I'm, take, I'm going to take advantage of this. Um, I was on a mission to find some old wood to make the triptych. I looked, across, oh, I looked across the lane, and there was this whole pile of rubble, so I thought, I'll go there. And as I was searching through to find this, uh, these old boards, I saw a sheet of paper. It was a corner. I picked it up sturdy, cleared it off, and I looked at the date, and it was dated in the 1850s. Wow, this is amazing. And then I proceeded to read. It was a, a letter from a little girl who lived in Detroit, and she was writing to her grandmother and telling her the plight of the family there. Someone didn't have shoes, several pe people had the flu. It was not a happy letter. But I was, my interest was piqued. I immediately went into the house and uh, showed it to Ed. And he felt it was worth looking for other papers also. So we and other family members spent several days looking for what we could find. And as we read the letters that had been written to Mary, Sh Mary Ann Shad Carey, and we saw the penmanship and the contents of the letters, we were so impressed. And we said, who are these people? And at that point, we made contact with Arlie from the museum. She was a curator. She came to our house and she said, the original owners, the people who had built the house, were Mary Ann Chad Carey's sister and her brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And the Mary Ann Chad Carey had lived there periodically when she was in Chatham, and that the papers were probably very important. That's amazing. So that was the first time in 1974 that we saw some. Uh, fast forward about two years to 1977, that's three years actually, the, uh, 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 Jim Bearden and uh, Linda Butler, 
two authors had caught wind of the fact that we had some papers. So they called and came to our house to see what the papers were all about. That was very interesting to them. They were very intrigued, and they were in the process of writing a book about Mary, um, Mary Ann Shad Carey. Uh, so they stayed overnight. That's how impressed we were. They stayed overnight. We just messed the people. And they stayed overnight to, to view the rest of the papers. They ended up writing a book and having it published in 1977. Uh, it was the uh, Life and Times of Mary Ann Shad Carey, and in, the book was called Shad. So that was when we had the opportunity to really learn something about Mary Ann Shad Carey. So that's it. So now we could spend the next hour talking about this, but we're gonna we're gonna end with one question, and that is, what does she mean to you now? What does she mean to you now? Shannon, let's start oh. with you. Oh, yeah, we're just waiting to see which one bit me. <laughs> well, to me, um, let's see. She means a lot of things to me. Um, and I think, you know, like because she, she's a role model, she's a leader, you know, an inspiration. Like she was a journalist, a lawyer, a feminist, and she was also a mother. And I think sometimes people forget that she was a mother, doing all of the many things mm -hmm. that she was doing. Uh, without a strong support network like some of us have today. Um, you know, and I think sh she was a strong woman and she, you know, exemplifies, um, you know, change and the power of voice and was not afraid to tell the truth. So, you know, I just, uh, I embrace who she was, who she was and all that she was because she means so much to me. Um, yeah, so, mm. yeah, because you're all wrapped up into one, because I think that's a loaded question. It is. <laughs> it really but is. But I asked Because, it. yeah. Uh, what about you, Adrian? <laughs> well, reading that first article, and I didn't know that much except what was in the article, um, I, it kind of opened my eyes to what was possible in black history, black Canadian history. Um, her example was really important in that, and it kind of changed the trajectory of my life in some ways. Really? Um, because I felt that if there was, there were people like Mary Ann Shad and her family in my own history that I didn't even know about, um, what else was out there? Who else, um, what other families had these great leaders and, and people who accomplished so much that we don't have any idea about, but are there waiting for us to discover them. So. What about you, Ed? Now, what it meant to me is quite interesting because I was really humbled by the accomplishments that Mary Ann Shedd had made. And it, it drew back, uh, it caused me to reflect back upon my uh, schooling in my life, the, she, she uh, there were two different areas specifically that I became interested in. One was her, her interest in education, the fact that, that she not only showed her, did that, but showed her interest very much by um, creating uh, situations for young people to learn, having her own schools, having uh, that, which was very, very interesting. The schools were integrated in terms of there were, were black and white students in the, in the classroom. It made me reflect back on my schooling. I went through school from 47 to 62, 1947 to 1962. And I was the only person of color in a class or as a teacher through that whole system. Very interesting, and it really caused me to think back on that. Uh, also, if they're ever brought up the, in a classroom, uh, uh, Negro or black or whatever have you, how I cringed or felt very uncomfortable even talking about that during those particular years. It really, uh, in, in that reflection, is you see that there were no role models, no persons for me to look up to that happened to be 
to look like me. And that was, uh, unfortunately, very interesting in my education. So th those are the types of things that went through my mind at that time. Also, I started to, to think of what she really brought forward. Education was the one. And uh, yeah, I was going to say, you know, I didn't know we could dance until um, American Bandstand in 1976 had a black couple. <laughs> The, the, the second part that, that I uh, gleaned from Mary Ann Shad Carey's beliefs was integration. And I firmly believe that you have to be in a room with other people to get to know them and, and them to get to know you. You've got to be there. And if you're ever going to be making policy on different people's lives, you've got to be at the table to have your idea brought forward. Mm -hmm. So those are my impressions of Marianne. And I think Maxine, she will definitely have different ones than I yeah, have. Well, so. I'm, I'm interested because Maxine, you were, you, you are an educator and you found, like you found her work. They were in your hands. And so you were seeing for the first time who this person was. So now when you think of her impact as an educator, what are your thoughts? Well, one thing that I think is Everyone has a story. We know that. But women's stories are often neglected. They don't often get into print. And I think with Mary Ann Shad Carey's story being such an extraordinary one, hooray that it's finally out there and that we know about it. Um, her accomplishments are even more impressive when you think about the kind of world that she was born into and the fact that she had to navigate that world with two strikes against her already, being black and being a woman. And it is surprising and exhilarating to see how much she was able to accomplish. Now, in terms of a role model. I wish I had had role models that I could look at in books and on TV and so so forth. And I'm I'm very very thankful that my grandchildren will be in a different situation. Mm. Two years ago, my grand my youngest is is it my youngest granddaughter who was in grade four did her Black History Project on Mary Ann Shad Carey. Mm. And she was so proud to do that. And after she had finished, her classmates started to call Mary Ann Shad Carey Stella's aunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. That's wonderful. And so I, and so I, I say that May Mary Ann Shad's story continue That's right. to That's be right. celebrated. Well, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. Adrian Shad, Maxine Robbins, Ed Robbins, and Shannon Prince, you've all kept the memory of Mary Ann Shad alive. Thank you. I know you're leaving the stage, but I wanted to tell you something. I wanted to tell you and the rest of Mary Ann's family that, as you know, St. Lawrence Hall is a historic venue and it's hosted a lot of prominent figures. And you, lot of, and you may have noticed that some of the individuals out in the foyer uh, are displayed in the lounges. Wouldn't it be nice if Mary Ann Shad Carey was on these walls? Wouldn't that be nice? On behalf of Archives Ontario and Toronto History Museums, I'd like to announce that they have collaborated to permanently display a portrait of Marianne Shad Carey and her transcriptions at St. Lawrence Hall.